Why do you know this? Why all of you in the room know this? I have done this activity with young children as young as five and seven year olds. I have done it in many colleges, uh, premier colleges, to small colleges, to NGOs, to corporate training programs where there are senior management and CEOs. Um, I've done it across people who might just be about to retire or senior citizens who have retired. Everybody recognized this. Everybody did. In spite of generation gap, in spite of where, which part of India they studied, irrespective of what background they had, irrespective of international to local schools, everybody recognized this. this. So my dear friends, I would like to break this news to you that art, which is supposed to be a beautifully divergent process where we are able to, able to experience thousands and different, thousands of different things, has been put into a template in a template and has been taught to us like a stamp year after year, decade after decade, century after century and generation over generation. For me, as an artist, this is how you kill, murder art mercilessly. Art appreciation in India does not exist. Art education in, in India does not exist. Um, there's a big divide between art artists and the rest of us. So instead of cribbing and crying about how it's not there, I just thought that probably I should take it up on myself to see how this gap can be bridged. The reason I was able to pick this topic as well is because I come from a, I was privileged to come from an art family. Three generation of my family has been, three to four generation have been involved in arts. I studied education, fine arts, so my degree is in fine arts. I have spent 18 to 19 years doing theatre. So that puts together a huge amount of art background and being working with artists. However, I had a privilege of intersecting and interacting with people who never, never had seen art, done art, had experienced art in any way possible. So you could imagine that as I was doing my art in college, uh, I would interact with people from, let's say, the corporate world or from a friend circle who were not from art. Um, when I would do training, and everyone would ask me, we don't understand art. What the hell is that? How are we supposed to figure it out? Can you explain this to us? I was not just questioned, but I was sometimes bullied and made fun of, um, because a lot of times, just the fact that you're an artist, people kind of get intimidated by you, because they think you work differently. Um, forget the experiences, but what remained with me were the questions of what they asked me. Because when I would talk about art, the responses of my uh, people who didn't know art would be something like this. I would say, hey, what about watching a parallel cinema? I would say, hey, would you like to do a date in an art gallery? I would love to invite them for my play, and I would be like, would you like to come for my play? Sometimes I would love to have discussion over a cup of coffee about the abstraction of modern art. <laughs> well, how about a midnight looking at polite and discuss a poetry or interpret art. 
I kept trying, didn't I? Sometimes I would love to have a very provocative discussion about the truth in art. Oh well, all this takes me back to that moment when I was the only one interested in art classes, while all my classmates would respond to a tang 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 art class. And that's how these questions about how do I make these people connect to art stayed with me as a pertinent question. Um, I didn't have answers. It took years and years of work for me to find answers. I knew it intuitively, but to explain this to someone else was very, very difficult. Uh, hence, what I did was uh, the time I was supposed to train people in theater who had never done theater before or tell people about how to connect with art is when I was able to break down this conceptual idea into step-by-step -step process or put it into a modular format which everybody could understand. So I will take you through some of them and hopefully when you walk out this door today, you will see art and you might connect with art slightly differently, right? So here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is how art, artists, and audience are absolutely deeply connected. Uh, if we are talking about everything is connected, and the first connection I want to talk about is art, artists, and the audience. It may be a reader and the writer. It may be the painter and someone who is viewing it in an art gallery. It might be a poem somebody had just written, and it could be the tear in somebody's eyes reading that poem. These two are inseparable. Art cannot exist without deep connection between these two. Thank you. So, so if art has to survive and art has to become a reality, it cannot happen without your contribution. So the more you're going to be intimidated with art, the more you're going to run away from it, the more you're going to bully the artist or find ways to escape because it's, you are not able to understand it, the art itself will suffer. So my first proposal to all of you is, let's get through these mental blocks and start engaging in art. Yes? Let's move on to, okay. Now I have engaged with art. I've gone to an art gallery, I went to watch a play, uh, I heard that music performance and it was... I didn't understand. Why does this happen? Why is that we are not able to understand art? The first reason we are not able to understand is we try and understand art. That is the problem. Because art cannot be understood. Yeah, the first mistake we are doing is we are trying to understand art and we cannot understand art because art has to be experienced. Art cannot be understood, art has to be experienced. What do I mean when I say art, is, art has to be experienced? It means that we need to involve, move from here, intellectual activity, analytical activity, critical activity towards working through our hearts and emotions. And that's when you will be able to experience art. Yeah? It's a tough transition. We have not been trained to do this. So art needs you to be involved through your heart, through your emotions, and most, most, most importantly, through the idea of your senses. So you need to experience art through your senses. Listening, feel what goes on in your body. How do you see the visuals? How do you see the colors? Uh, what does the performance have an impact on you? So we need to indulge in art by not understanding, but through, routed through a different route. That is my first point. So please, the time you're trying to understand art, we will not be successful. We will only be scared, yeah? Next point, something very simple, is the fact that art we have been trained to find right answers. Is that correct? 
um, all our mathematics, all our science, all our education system has trained us over years to find the right answer. Yeah, and when we are trying to understand art or experience art, we are trying to find the right answer there. Yeah, and when we are trying to find the right answer, we get frustrated, we get angry, and we feel we are somehow stupid that we are not able to understand that. What is that artist trying to say? What is that right answer the artist is trying to say, which I am supposed to understand? And hence, in that process, we are lost. So, I would like to let you know that art is not a convergent process. That means when it comes to a lot of science and a lot of uh, education, we always are trying to come down to the right answer. That is a convergent thinking process. But art, rather, starts from one single point. It could be a muse. It could be a movement. It could be a silence. It could be a trigger. It could be a smile of a child. It could be just the raindrop and the dew drop on an early morning. It could be a beautiful musical note. And there, art begins. The artist gets inspired. And he goes from that point to few thousand and lakh different points. So artist is allowed to start from here and go wherever. And hence, art feels so liberating. That is the beauty of art, that it can go anywhere it wants to. It could lead to a million different ideas and perspectives. Finally, the third thing is now we have got engaged with art. We have stopped intellectualizing art, but we have started experiencing art. And third, we are OK if art says 100 million things to us. The last part, which I think is very important to understand, is especially modern art. Once you leave the classical art, the modern art consists of the idea that we move from the idea of representation to interpretation. A lot of times when we look at art, or we are watching a play, or we are listening to music, we are trying to understand what the artist is trying to say, representing it to us. Are they trying to show us a mountain? Are they trying to show us a, 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 a garlic? We are trying to understand the representation. Now imagine if we start investing more time and energy in looking at art and finding many, many, many more interpretations. Yeah? Um, and who knows? The way I look at it is if you learn how to interpret art, tomorrow you can interpret your life. If you can interpret art, you can interpret problems in your life. If you can interpret art, we might be able to solve the mysteries of the universe because we will be looking at it in a, from a different lens altogether. If we learn in, to interpret art, we might be able to solve some of the world problems. If we learn how to interpret art, we might just be able to solve many, many corporate organizational management problems. If we learn how to interpret art, we might be just able to unscript our lives, the way we are looking at it, the way we have been seeing it for so many years, the way people have told us to see it for so many years. We might just be able to unscript, erase that script what people have told us, and wear new lenses and start viewing art in an absolutely different light. And this is going to liberate us as an audience because now you don't need to intellectualize art. You need to use the tool which you're born with, which is imagination. You can apply your imagination, look at the world around you, and start interpreting it in the way you want. If I say, this is the garlic, if I have ever titled a painting called, this is garlic, chances are that 100 of you will see a garlic. Because I said so. But if I, I just put this image in front of you and allowed you to use your imagination, I am sure each of you are seeing different things right now. Somebody might be seeing their childhood toy. Some, might, some of you might be seeing that these are my emotions caught in an in a entanglement. Some of you might see that this is the cage I am in which I would like to break free. Somebody else might just see a child's cradle. And hundred of you 
can have 100 imagination in this room, which leads us to a thousand interpretations versus garlic. So, my dear friends, I invite all of you to start looking at the world around you through the lenses of art, because it liberates you. Once you start interpreting art, the artists will have a lot more freedom to experiment and liberate themselves. To end this little piece, I'm going to draw what I drew the first time, but I want all of you to see it in a lens and with your imagination. So here we go. Draw along with me if you can. It's a simple activity. Draw along with me. Join me in this.